Nordgren får ut den till Urberg som vände kant. Skoglösa och här finns det mycket yta. Lindholm. Lindholm! Hi again everyone. Back with another video. I know it's been a while since I did a goal analysis. So I'd just like to have a look at this goal, which was scored by Helsingborg, the team in white, against Stovreta, the team in red. I really like this goal. It is a really good example of breaking the pressure of a forecheck and moving the ball efficiently. Right now you can see the ball is with this white player here in the corner. And while technically speaking, the white team does have the ball, they are under quite a bit of pressure at the moment. I wouldn't consider them to be in attack as yet, but let's move on into the analysis. So starting with the white team here, or the team that ends up scoring the goal. Um, first of all, they have quite a good structure. Even though they are under pressure in their own end, you can see that they have equal numbers. It's four against four below this green line here on the goal side of that. And all of the white players are essentially between a red player and the net. Um, you can see just with these pairs here, if anything were to go wrong and the red team were to get the ball, the white team is in a very good position to assume the defensive role very quickly and hopefully prevent a quick goal against them. And another thing that you will notice as this moves forward is that even though the white team are under heavy pressure in their own end, they do seem quite calm and composed. And this is something that I notice throughout this whole clip here. And it's really nice, to be honest. It seems that their players are calm and they're able to think clearly, even though their team is under pressure. Even the ball carrier at the moment does a great job of keeping the ball while under pressure and eventually moving it to another player I've just moved it forward a few frames here. Before I talk about position, I would just note that the other white player, you can see their stick just here. So they are still within their own half and presumably between the other red player, the fifth red player and their own net. So again, good structure and good risk management by the white team here. So having a look at the white team structure in terms of them having the ball and their position, they are actually providing support options to the player with the ball. So this player at the net, potentially this player with the ball could play along these boards here and this person at the net would be able to pick it up. If they were really daring, they might even try and play out through this gap here and that white player there would still be able to pick all of that up because they are essentially owning all of this space through here. So that's good. And you can see the other support option here, this player here. So if this white player in the corner is able to play out along the boards, this player is going to be able to receive it. They may be under a bit of pressure, but they should be able to at least receive it and not lose the ball because they are largely in control of this area here. What I will note about the positioning of this player here is they have taken up a position a little bit to the inside of the court. So they're not right over on the board somewhere here. They are a few meters inside and what that allows them to do is when the ball is played out here, it can be played into space and they can come and meet the ball and then they'll have options. They'll be able to either turn with a little bit of speed and face up the court to have a look at their options that way. And if nothing's on there, they can always turn around or receive the ball this way so they can have a look at their options down towards their own end. This changes as the clip goes through, but I'd just like to point that out now because if they were to take a position right out on the boards and this red player came with them and was as close as they are here, 
out in this area here, then it's going to be much harder for them to make an effective play if the ball does come to them. Essentially, they've given themselves a bit of space to move into as soon as the ball starts moving towards them, and that will create a bit of separation between them and the player marking them so they'll have a bit more time and space to make a decision. So let's move it through and see how that plays out a little bit. So you can see that right now, this player has actually moved much closer to the boards. And that was largely a result of the ball carrier looking like they were actually going to get a pass out along these boards. It was blocked by Sunstead, number 66 on the red team. Uh, but it has gone back to the original ball carrier. But what happened was when this white player here thought that the pass was going to come out and the ball would be in that area, they moved into it. But because of the play being disrupted, the ball went back to its original position. However, this white player is now in the position where they anticipated they would have the ball. You can also see that this player here has started to break a little bit. They're no longer between their player and the net and they've started to move wide. And that was also in anticipation of the ball getting out and free back to this player. And now they're sort of hesitating before moving any further because essentially they're back to where they started and the ball carrier is actually under heavier pressure now. So just here, the ball has actually come loose now. You can see that this red player is looking down here somewhere. We can't actually see the ball because of this barrier in the, the stands there. And this white player is looking at the ball here. One thing that I really like is that this player who is about to receive the ball, they know the ball is coming. And once they've registered that, before they get the ball, they're looking at their options. So they're looking this way and they can see that this player here is completely free and is probably their best passing option. So they're just having a look to see what's available before they get the ball so that when they do get it, they are not clueless as to what to do with it. You can also see that this player here has noticed that the ball has gotten free and they've started to drift in anticipation of going forward to get a quick break or a counter-attack, something like that. The pass has now been made to this player here, but one thing I would like to say is that this player who made the pass, they were very calm and collected and they just made a sensible play based on surveying their options. They didn't try to do anything fancy. They knew that they were essentially facing this way and they could not see if there was an option to attack up the court. But they also knew that this player here was facing this way up the court. So they just made a simple one-touch pass as soon as they got the ball back to that player who was not under pressure because that player has a better view of the court from that position and the way their body is oriented. And they knew that that player would be able to make a good decision from there. So this player here has just received the ball. You can see that they are in a whole lot of space. They got out quickly in anticipation of a counter-attack. You can see how much ground they have covered. They're already in the attacking half of the court, but you'll notice that they have a lot of space on this side of the court. And the reason for that is that the ball initially was on the close side of the court, the near side of the court. So it's always a good idea if possible to move the ball across the court in some way and attack from there because most of the time if the ball is on one side of the court there will be space on the opposite side of the court so I'll just take it back a little bit so as you can see the ball was on the near side of the court and if we draw a line down the middle of the court, essentially most of the red players are on 
this side of the line. If we took that line a little bit further out to the edge of the goalkeeper area here, pretty much all of the red players are on this side of that line. So there is a heap of space all through this area down here. And that's what the white team do. Essentially, they pop it out and quickly switch the ball into the free space. As long as they've got one player in that space, they'll be able to exploit it and advance the ball quickly. Even if that free player was somewhere down in this area, they'd still have plenty of space to move the ball up. And well, not really much more to say here. A really nice shot. Um, obviously the player had the time to get the ball under control have a look at the net and pick their spot. And obviously they've got quite an accurate shot there with a very quick release. So really nice. And they've just beat the goalie over the shoulder on the near post. So a great shot to, to finish off a nice play out from under pressure. Okay, so that's all I'm really going to say for this video. I'm not going to talk about defense, but if you have any ideas for adjustments the defensive team could have made, I'd love to hear those, so leave a comment. Likewise, if you have any other thoughts or opinions, just leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. But I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Nordgren får ut den till Urberg som vem det kan. Skoglösa, och här finns det mycket yta. Lindholm. Lidholm! Oj, vad snyggt han gör det där! Nummer 24, Niklas Lidholm, när han sprätter upp den i första solpen.